Picture this. A single table, the confusion matrix, holds the key to understanding any machine learning model or medical test. It's a gold mine packed with over 25 metrics, but seven rise above. Recall, specificity, Jordan's J-index, precision, negative predictive value, accuracy and balanced accuracy. In this video, we're digging into what makes these seven essential, how they function and why they are the backbone of machine learning. One problem we need to solve up front is these metrics have multiple names depending on the field you are in. Take sensitivity, for example. In machine learning, it's called recall. In medicine, it's the true positive rate. Engineers refer to it as the probability of detection. It's all the same thing, but the names change depending on who you are talking to, and that can be confusing as hell. To calculate sensitivity, we only need the left column of the confusion matrix. Namely, we divide the true positives by all actual positive cases. In other words, sensitivity measures the percentage of true positives that the model correctly identifies. That's why the second name for sensitivity is true positive rate. In our Titanic example, it's the percentage of survivors our model detected, which explains the third definition, probability of detection. A sensitivity ranges from 0 to 1, or 0% to 100% where 1 indicates perfect sensitivity or no false negatives and 0 means no ability to detect positive cases. In our example, sensitivity is low because we missed 39 survivors and low sensitivity isn't what we usually want. For example, in medicine, sensitivity is critical for screening tests like cancer detection or infectious disease testing like COVID-19. If a test has low sensitivity, it means many cancer patients are misdiagnosed as healthy, leading to dangerous delays in treatment. A test with high sensitivity ensures that most patients with the condition are identified, even if it leads to some false positives, which can be followed up with more specific tests. In machine learning, sensitivity is essential for fraud detection or anomaly detection where positive cases, like fraudulent transactions with credit cards, are rare but critical. A model with high sensitivity ensures that most fraud, fraudulent, fraud, how do you pronounce this? Fraudulent. Most fraudulent activities are flagged, even if it generates some false alarms. So we need to maximize sensitivity and get as few false negatives as possible. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Since sensitivity is particularly valuable in contexts where the cost of missing a positive case outweighs the cost of a false positive, we can boost sensitivity by literally increasing the cost of false negatives with the card pointer package and the card pointer function. For instance, if we set the cost of false negatives to five times the cost of false positives, we'll increase our sensitivity from 54% to a staggering 95%. Sensitivity helps us to catch as many true positives as possible, which is crucial for scenarios like cancer screening. But here is the catch. Pushing sensitivity too high often spikes false positives. That can be dangerous in other cases, like autonomous driving, where a self-driving car might mistake a shadow for a pedestrian, triggering unnecessary emergency braking, and risking a crash. In situations where minimizing false positives and maximizing true negatives matter most, high specificity is key. So let's dive into specificity next. Unfortunately, specificity also goes by many names. In medicine, it's called the true negative rate. In machine learning, it's sometimes referred to as selectivity. In engineering, some call it probability of correct rejection, a term I personally find particularly intuitive. To calculate specificity, we only need the right column of the confusion matrix. Namely, we divide the true negatives by all actual negative cases. In plain English, specificity measures the percentage of actual negatives that the model correctly identifies as negative. That's why another name for it is the true negative rate. 
In our Titanic example, specificity tells us how many non-survivors the model correctly classifies as dead. Specificity ranges from 0 to 1, or 0% to 100%, where 1 indicates a perfect model with no false positives, and 0 means it fails to rule out negative cases altogether. In our example, specificity is solid at 93% because we only mislabeled 8 non-survivors as survivors. While sensitivity is about catching positives, specificity is about avoiding false alarms, which is critical in certain high-stakes scenarios. For example, in medicine, a low-specificity test might falsely label healthy people as having cancer, leading to unnecessary anxiety, biopsies, chemotherapy, or even surgery. Moreover, low specificity in a rare disease test can overwhelm healthcare systems with false alarms. So, sometimes we need to maximize specificity and keep false positives as low as possible. Can we do that? Of course. We can boost specificity of our model by increasing the cost of false positives. Using the cut pointer package in R, we can shift the decision threshold to minimize false positives and prioritize true negatives, even at the cost of missing some true positives. For instance, set the cost of false positive to five times the cost of false negatives and watch specificity jump from impressive 93% to an incredible 98%. So, as you can see, data scientists face a challenging trade-off. Raising sensitivity to detect all fraudsters risks increasing false alarms, while boosting specificity to protect legitimate transactions might miss some fraudulent activity. And that's where Yadin's J index comes in. Yadin's index helps us to find the sweet spot between sensitivity and specificity, maximizing overall model effectiveness. Thus, let's dive into that next. This video is brought to you by Stock Unlock. Ever wondered how to invest like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger? Stock Unlock is the best place to start mastering long-term value investing. With over 170,000 stocks and ETFs, more than 35 years of financial data, and over 100 valuation metrics, Stock Unlock gives you unparalleled insights into the market. Their visualization tools simplify complex data, helping you to spot opportunities and risks instantly. Even a single number, the inside score, which is actually the main reason people stay with Stock Unlock, will make you a better investor in seconds. The inside score adapts metrics to different industries, from banks to tech companies. It's a game changer for identifying great investment opportunities instantly and avoiding potential pitfalls, something I personally fell into before discovering Stock Unlock. Want to learn more? Use the Learn button to explore detailed, yet short and clear explanations of any investment metrics you are interested in. Or check out the creator's YouTube channels to get to know exactly who is behind Stock Unlock. Since joining Stock Unlock, I've learned more in months than in years of self-study. And that's why I partnered with them. Best of all, you can start with one free month of full functionality and if you're ready to commit, use my exclusive affiliate link below to get 10% of your first year. Take the first free step towards smarter investing. Try Stock Unlock today. Yadin's J is incredibly useful when both false positives and false negatives carry significant consequences. That's why Yadin's J index maximizes true positives and minimizes false positives. Fun fact, Yadin's J-Index is also known as bookmaker informedness because it measures how much more informed a test or model is compared to random guessing. The term comes from the betting world, Take bets. where bookmakers rely on information to predict outcomes better than random chance. To calculate Yadin's J-Index, we combine sensitivity and specificity. Since the simple sum of sensitivity and specificity ranges from 1 to 2, which is not easily interpretable, the minus 1 in J's formula normalizes the scale to range from 0 to 1, which can be easily interpreted. Namely, J equals 0 indicates 
the test performs no better than random chance and thus has no useful information. J equals 1 indicates the test perfectly distinguishes between positives and negatives. In short, Yatton's J or informantness tells us how well a test or model improves decision making over random chance. In R, there are two easy ways to calculate Yadin's index. One is using the intuitive Yadin's function from the cut pointer package, and the other is using the summary of the AP tests function from the APR package. A J of 0.476 is acceptable but not strong. It tells us the model performs better than random guessing, but could be refined to better balance sensitivity and specificity. How? I'm glad you asked. Yadis J can be maximized using the same cut pointer function we use to maximize sensitivity and specificity. If you are intrigued by the cut pointer function and wonder why I haven't explained it in detail, it's because I have an in-depth video on raw curves where I dive deep into the cut pointer function. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet. And if you just want the R code from any of my videos, feel free to join my channel as a member. Here, I just want to show you that by slightly increasing sensitivity from 54 to 67%, and at the same time slightly decreasing specificity from 93 to 89%, we could increase the Yadin's J index from 47 to 56%. Cool, right? That makes our model more precise. And speaking of precision, we need to discuss it next. Because precision is one of the most important and widely used metrics derived from the confusion matrix. Precision, also known as the positive predictive value, measures how accurate positive predictions are. It's the percentage of positive results that are correct, showing how likely a positive test result is to be true. During the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, sensitivity was key to catching as many infected people as possible. But later, as the spread slowed and testing cramped up, precision took the spotlight. To calculate precision, we focus on the top row of the confusion matrix, the predicted positives. It's the ratio of true positives to all predicted positive cases. Precision ranges from 0 to 1 or 0% to 100%. A score of 1 means every positive prediction was correct, no false positives, while 0 means they were all wrong. In our Titanic example, a precision of 85% tells us that 85% of the passengers flagged as survivors by the model really did survive. That's solid. Only 8 out of 54 predicted survivors were misclassified. But why does precision matter so much? Well, think about spam email filters. High precision ensures that when an email lands in your spam folder, it's almost certainly jank. In contrast, if you have low precision, you are digging through spam to find that urgent email from your boss. It's a nightmare, isn't it? Precision can also be calculated using sensitivity, specificity and prevalence, though the formula is a bit heavy and difficult to remember. What is easy to remember is that when there is a positive predictive value, there should also be a negative predictive value, right? Indeed, the negative predictive value tells us how many negative test results are accurate. To calculate negative predictive value, we only need the bottom row of the confusion matrix, predicted negatives. We divide the number of true negatives by the total number of negative predictions. Negative predictive value is crucial because it builds trust in negative results. For instance, in cancer screening, if your test comes back negative and the NPV is 99%, there is a 99% chance you truly don't have cancer. That's very reassuring, only a 1% chance of a mistake. But if your NPV is 74%, like in our example, it means that 70% of the time, and negative result is correct. But that leaves a 26% chance that the negative result is wrong, and you might actually have cancer. Would that ease your mind? Probably not, and it's pretty big risk to worry about, 
So NPV is really important because it directly affects how much you can trust a negative test result. So positive predictive value tells us how often our positive predictions are actually correct. On the other hand, negative predictive value measures how accurate our negative predictions are. While both are useful, they focus on only one side of the prediction outcomes, either positives or negatives. But what if we need to evaluate the overall correctness of all predictions, both positives and negatives? That's where accuracy comes in. Accuracy gives us the big picture performance by measuring the proportion of all correct predictions regardless of class. By the way, what metrics do you use and which are the main metrics in your opinion? I'm really interested to know your thoughts. The formula for accuracy is simple. Add true positives and true negatives and divide by the total number of cases. And that's it. Pretty unspectacular, right? While a higher accuracy is generally what we want, accuracy can be misleading when dealing with even mildly imbalanced classes, where one outcome slightly outnumbers the other. That is actually why we have a more robust metric like balance accuracy at all. Let me show you why balanced accuracy is better. Balanced accuracy offers a solution by averaging the sensitivity and specificity ensuring both classes are given equal consideration. In our example, a balanced accuracy of 74% is only 3% below the overall accuracy of 77%, suggesting that the classes are relatively balanced. But it's not often the case, and that is the reason I don't trust accuracy when I don't see confusion matrix or balanced accuracy being compared to accuracy. You can easily compute balance accuracy using the confusion matrix function from the caret package. Now, while balanced accuracy is handy for slightly imbalanced datasets, sometimes the balance accuracy can be almost half of the accuracy, indicating that our dataset is highly skewed and imbalanced. For example, consider a dataset with 1000 cases, where only 5% are positive. In this case, a model can achieve a staggering 95% accuracy simply by predicting negative every single time. Yet it fails to detect any positives, resulting in 100% incorrect positive predictions, which is unacceptable. Without viewing the confusion matrix, we remain unaware of this mess. However, balance accuracy reveals this weakness by resulting in a much lower score thereby indicating that something is seriously off. So, focusing only on accuracy can hide many errors, leading to poor decisions. Sometimes knowing how inaccurate our model is can be very useful because it reveals where and how often our model is wrong. Metrics like the misclassification rate and false discovery rate are incredibly practical and deserve their own video. Therefore, if you want to make your models rock solid and trustworthy or explain why some model results should not be trusted, you need to watch this video next.